It was the morning of January 24, 1848, when James Marshall found gold at John Sutter's lumber mill on California's American River. One year later, in 1849, gold fever had infected the world and more than 300,000 people came to California to find their fortunes. It was the start of the gold rush. These pioneer miners were farmers and businessmen. Most of them never found their riches and went back home. Yet others stayed in California and made a living helping other miners. They settled in tiny towns like Old Dry Diggins, which today we know as the city of Placerville. California's gold rush is an important part of American history. This program is about the gold miners and how they did their work. The vocabulary words and web pages will help you to learn more about the gold rush. Let's meet the miners at Placerville's Gold Bug Park and see what life was like for these rugged pioneers. Gold panning was slow, hard work. The miners created special tools and methods to process the dirt more quickly and easily. They used rockers, sluice boxes, and stamp mills. Hydraulic mining used huge jets of water to wash away cliffs and mountains. Okay, now I'm going to meet my friend Patrick here, and he knows the second part of this job, so I will let you stay with him now. Good luck to you. This is a, called a monitor or a water cannon. Uh, first used for hydraulic mining, it's called. It's a placer mining operation. This cannon shot out water about 300 feet at 500 foot-pounds, and so it would just eat up the countryside. It was the cheapest method of, de of developing the material into washing gold. So the box at the back was used as a counterweight. There'd be a guy here that could actually maneuver this and rotate it and, and point it at the cliff. They, they cut cliffs that were two, three hundred feet high, washed all that material down. Millions upon millions of cubic yards of mud went into the rivers here in the valley, along with mercury. So from 1852 to about 1890, they hydraulic mined. And finally, because of the damage done to the state, uh, the Sacramento and all the other rivers, that literally it was just poisoning this countryside. So they finally got it stopped. Okay, this is the stamp mill itself. Now this is called an eight stamp mill. It was set up here in 1900 for the silver pine mine, which is directly behind us. The uh, mine would feed the ore in at the top. A primary crusher would bring it down to two inches. Two inches minus, it's called, that's this size of rock. This machine would take that quartz rock down to this very fine powder, this stuff here. And that's where the gold was laying. You can't see the gold in there. It takes mercury to pick it up. It's so small. So the machine actually worked by uh, first power was uh, water powered. It was brought down from the uh, South Fork American River Canal, 28 miles uh, east of us. The water was brought in. There was an 18-foot overshot water wheel on that side. That power turned out to be costing too much money, so after three years, they took, changed over to a steam engine. That steam engine ran then from 1903 to about 1940, or thereabouts. The power turns this belt, the big bull wheel. This is the camshaft. These are cams, and they rotate around and pick up the tappet. The tappet would go up about eight inches and drop. Each one of these is picking up and dropping the stamp twice every revolution. So it's 104 snaps every time times eight. So it was just a horrendous, terribly horrendous roar continually through the day. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, these men worked in here. They would go deaf within three weeks. They took that job because of the high pay they were paid to run the risk in here. Going deaf, upstairs in the, it was uh, black lung, the miners call it, psychosis from dust in your lungs from the primary, no water. Uh, the uh, mercury element in here would be added here on these tables right here. Be mercury 12 feet this wide, 12 feet long, mercury on a copper plate. So mercury poisoning was a, was a big possibility here in this, in this building. This uh, is called a base, or, and this is the die or base, and this is called the shoe, and these are replaceable. There's a full, full one, three weeks, and it would be this size. 
I'm going to pick this one up. It weighs about 35 pounds, eight inches, and drop it. These weigh 500 pounds. Okay, here we go. Are we ready? So, the crushed this fine powder would come out over this table right here, this wide, 12 feet long, covered with copper, treated with mercury. The mercury, uh, gold sticks to mercury, mercury sticks to copper. And that's how the prog program worked. Once it got the amalgam and it's called gold and mercury mixed, it got so thick that it was, uh, the mercury could not accept anymore. They would scrape it out of there and take it downstairs to be processed. All right, so now we're down here at the, uh, this is a scale model of that machine up there. And uh, it was built because we can't run that one, and this will give you the idea of how it actually operated. So I'm going to run this for about 10 seconds to give you an idea of what it's like. And it's only 10 seconds because of the, how loud it is, okay? So as I told you up there, ore be brought in, crushed down by this machine, and flow out onto the amalgamate tables that I mentioned up there. The amalgamate table is covered with copper, treated with mercury, and the gray section over there in that pan is what represents the amalgamate once it is completely choked with gold, and they have to recover that, make a cleanup, it's called, so that when it, and all this material got to that gray color, they would clean it out, and then they would go to a further process that I'll get to in a minute. But right now, I want to run this thing for you. So the material that would be brought out of the pans down there, the amalgam, that's gold and mercury mixed together, uh, that would be brought, put into this tool called a retort. This is an artifact of that era. They'd put it in that vessel, seal it tight so the vapors couldn't get out, and then that would be se separating the mercury from the gold. And basically, very simple, 650 degrees of heat underneath the vessel. That makes it boil. The uh, vapors raise up, they're trapped in that vessel, and they'd be forced down through the tube, which is cold water. The vapors turn back to a liquid. The mercury is then recovered. They recovered 99.5% of the mercury here, and that was put right back into the system. So that left the gold in the uh, vessel there on the right. It was called sponge gold simply because when mercury boiled off, it left gaps and openings in the gold. The gold then would be taken out of that, placed in the uh, furnace at 2,500 degrees. At that temperature, all metals turn to a, to a liquid. Gold is the heaviest, sinks to the bottom, and make gold bars.